In preparation for Valorant, I wanted to fix my aim. Most of the time, I'd say that my aim in video games is good enough, but there are also a lot of moments where I just wish I could go back in time and do it over. What are you aiming at? I understand that if I want to play games like Valorant at a high level successfully, then these moments shouldn't really happen, all too often at least. So I, I finally decided to take some action and look into one of those aim trainers that are all over the place really to see if that would actually work. The aim trainer that I went with was Kovax 2.0 on Steam, mainly because my friend Fraxy told me to get that because he also has it so you know he could help me out a bit with what type of scenarios I should practice. Now at the start when just jumping in it is safe to say that I got a good slap to the face. You know I thought that my aim was pretty tight until the results came in. And it was anything but tight, with pretty average and also some inconsistent scores. I was like, what the hell? I'm not ready for Valorant at all. But then after picking out a good routine, uh, which again, Frexy helped me with, that would cover both precision click timing and target tracking. My aim has actually become very, very good in just 21 days, in just three weeks. How good, you ask? Well, I'm not the best aimer in the world, obviously. Uh, but I am good enough now to be in the top 1 or 2% for a lot of the scenarios, which is actually really hard to do. Now, there's a lot of really good players also playing uh, this aim trainer. And I've even got myself a number 2 spot in the world on the leaderboards, one of the harder click timing scenarios that also a good amount of people have played as well. You better watch out Zeke, I'm coming for you. So how did that happen? How did I go from this to this? Thing is, I'm not really sure. I think it was just practice, but with this video, I kind of wanted to go over it and try and figure that out. So maybe you can do the same thing and you can also play Valorant at a somewhat high level. Let's start with the routine. The routine that I uh, had for Kovax was uh, four main scenarios. I got two for precision and, and click timing and also two for straight up tracking. Uh, for precision, I went with five sphere hip fire small. The names don't really matter, but for anybody that wants to copy my routine, I'm just giving the exact names of the scenario so you can type those in yourself and then, you know, maybe try it out for yourself as well. But yeah, the first scenario is very straightforward. It's just five small bolts in front of you that you have to click as fast as possible uh, until the time runs out, which is a minute. And then a variation of that is one wall, six targets extra small, which is basically the same, but different. In this scenario, the targets are further away, they are quite a bit smaller, and they're also further apart. So this is basically the first scenario, but then just a lot more difficult. The five ball scenario is for smaller adjustments and doing that somewhat faster, while the, the six target scenario is good for control of the mouse when you're moving a little bit further and also with a little more precision. And now for the tracking uh, side of the routine, I went with Ascended Tracking V3 and Rex Strafe Scada. Ascended tracking is uh, really good for mouse control because, uh, well, we have these targets that move from the left to the right and all over the place and they spawn behind you and next to you. Uh, and it's just good to get a good feel of how much you should move the mouse when you want to move the mouse in a consistent pace to the left and the right. Uh, it's fairly easy to predict where the targets are going. It's not rocket science, so it's not mimicking a lot of human movement. But I think it's so good to have a scenario like this when you're just starting out, just so you get a good feel for how you should move the mouse. And then the Rex Strafe Skada is more of a uh, representation of a human that is actually strafing in any given game. Uh, it will do some fast and unpredictable strafes, it will go up the staircase, it will go left right really fast and it will uh, take a longer strafe. It's just all about mixing it up. So I'd have these four scenarios and I would do each of them about 30 minutes and then a little bit more if I felt like it. So each day I would I would play for at least two hours, but because I usually try to, you know, get in a new record every day, it usually ended up being a little bit longer for each of these uh, scenarios. So, you know, about two and a half to three hours a day. Now, as I said, on day one, the scores were pretty rough, uh, but that's of course expected at the start. Uh, the scoring works different on each scenario, so I wouldn't really compare them against each other. These scores are just, uh, you know, they're just useful to take as a baseline to know where you start so that, you know, in a few days you can see whether you're advancing or not. So let's get to the scores. For both the click timing scenarios, uh, I started off just above the median. So my assumption about being just above average uh, with aiming was right in this case. However, with the Rex challenge, I really got destroyed and my score was not even above the median. So it was obvious right from the get-go that my tracking needed a lot of work. 
Still a lot better than Antash though on the Ascended tracking. The second day had some interesting results. I had insane improvements on the tracking, which I wasn't really expecting because it went so horrible the first day. Uh, but then for the click timing parts, it was the opposite. The averages went up across the board a little bit, uh, but I couldn't break the high scores. And then on the third day, it was just crazy. High scores far beyond what I would have ever expected when looking at my day one performance. And this is the first time where I was like, yeah, okay, this aim trainer might actually just do something for me. And then the fourth day, I got slapped right in the face. The newbie games were over and for a couple of days, the progress went a lot slower. I got some high scores here and there. Uh, on the sixth day, for example, I got over 11,000 high score on Rex. Uh, but at that time, I was also looking at my friend Frexy, who was comfortably sitting at 14,000, which was... That just seemed impossible to me at that time. I did look back at my own footage though, and I noticed that my biggest problem uh, was overshooting on a lot of these scenarios. So what I decided to do uh, on the fourth or the fifth day is lower my sense a little bit from uh, 500 DPI and 2.2 in game on the source engine uh, scaler to 500 DPI and 1.8 in game also on the source engine scaler. And this, didn't really improve my results too much until the seventh day where I broke a new record on both the five target scenario and the six target scenario. Now this did not necessarily mean that my aim improved because I also lowered my sense and when you lower your sense it gets a lot easier to uh, hit smaller targets I guess and since especially on the five ball scenario the balls are pretty close together uh, the cheat you could lower your sense to an insane amount and it would be really easy to hit them, right? It would be really easy to get a high score. So I think me changing the sense affected that a little bit uh, because if you look at my tracking scenarios, those scores didn't necessarily get higher. And it really shows as well that during this time my aim didn't necessarily improve because I quickly got used to the lower sense and then for the next three days I just hit a wall where I really couldn't beat my high scores on almost any scenario. It's actually crazy how day after day I hit near identical high scores on the point click challenges and on the sanded tracking. The only area where I saw some improvements was Rex and that was about it. And this is where I really started thinking, well, you know, maybe my aim just isn't as great and maybe this is where I hit my limit. But nevertheless, I stuck with it. And what do you know, on day 10, I don't know what happened, but suddenly I got really good. A new record on the Six Sphere Challenge, on Rex and on the Sanded Tracking, and not just by a little bit, but by a good chunk on each of them. It's like I suddenly got good at aiming, and I'm not really sure how this happened. I even got a new record on the Five Sphere scenario, and I only played that for a little bit that day because I wasn't really feeling it and I was already satisfied with that day's results. But there was still something in the back of my mind that I was just lucky that day, that I just had a really good day, that I just... I don't know what happened. So on day 11, I sort of took a day off to focus on some other challenges. I still did the same challenges, but just not as much. I played things such as one wall 20 targets or Kada IC fast strafes, which are variations of the scenarios that I already played, but were still a little bit different and they focused on uh, other parts of aiming. And I had two reasons to do this. One, Fraxy told me that if I wanted to break the wall that I was previously in, I had to, you know, practice other scenarios. Uh, so I was finally like, hey, let's do it. Uh, and then two, I was also kind of intimidated by my own scores that I set the day before because as I said, I thought I just had a really good day and I kind of knew that there was no way I was going to beat those scores anytime soon. So my first reaction was to just focus on other things and pretend yesterday never happened. And then on day 12, I, I picked up the routine again. And although I didn't get a high score on the five sphere challenge and on the Senate tracking because I didn't really play those very long, I did get even higher scores on the six sphere challenge and on Rex. And especially the six target one wall extra small score that I got that day. Uh, it was a thousand, which is just insane to me at least. That's only 10% less than a number one spot in the world had. And again, I wasn't sure if I was just being lucky or if I just got a really good run that day, but my averages also went up by a lot. So I was getting very enthusiastic here because I was seeing some real results that I was not expecting just a few days ago. Then on the 13th, I had a party and I got drunk and I ended up having a pretty bad hangover. So my performance for the following two days was really bad. I didn't set any new records. I barely played. 
uh, which means I don't really have a lot of scores for this. It's just it's just a little all over the place. But then the 15, I picked it back up and I got another record for uh, the six sphere challenge that day. I guess the lesson that we learned from these few days is that uh, if I want to take Valorant somewhat seriously, I gotta not drink as much alcohol. The 17 was kind of a down day. I didn't really see much improvement. So what I did is I decided to take Frexy's advice again. And on the 18th, I decided to practice other scenarios. So I don't have a lot of data for the usual scenarios that I uh, practiced uh, on the 18th. But the practice did pay off because on the 19th, I got new records for the six target scenario and Rex. Then on day 20, I got really close again. And day 21, I broke the records again. I actually scored a total score of 1070 on uh, the six target challenge, which is only 30 points less than the world record. I don't know. I was really happy that I hit that because just 20 days ago, I was struggling to get uh, a score of 750, which was just above the median. And I just was not seeing how it would be possible to get even close to a thousand. That much really has changed in just 21 days. The thing is though, if I look at this graph, there isn't really a moment where I look back and say, that's where I really got good. With this one trick, you can have godlike aim. I guess something happened on the 9th and the 10th where I suddenly just started to get it, I guess. Maybe it's because I started doing some other scenarios, uh, some variety, but still do scenarios that mattered to the main scenarios I was practicing. Maybe it was because I also started to look back at footage I started to realize I was overshooting a lot, so maybe, you know, adjusting the sense was the right thing to do. It's really hard to say how I suddenly got good at aiming. I don't really know for sure, so I'm just leaving that as an open answer to this video and you can make your own conclusions. I think the most important part is consistency though. Uh, I've had a lot of days here where I practiced and I felt like I was not gonna get better and I was just not gonna improve and Fraxy was always gonna be the better gamer and he probably still is. I mean, aim isn't everything. And he's got, I don't know how many hours in CSGO, it's probably going to be way better in Valorant, just like everybody else that comes from CSGO. But this at least says to me that, hey, if I practice enough, I can be just as good, if not better. And I think that will count for a lot of people. A lot of people just say, hey, I'm not that good at shooters, but they don't actually ever try to get better. And I just wanted to make this video to show you that, hey, you can actually get really good if you just put your mind to it and put uh, a couple hours a day aside each day. To get better that's it for this video uh if you thought that this video was interesting i can post another update uh, in a couple months when i've had a lot more time on these aim trainers probably gonna switch up all the scenarios though because i feel like you know i've kind of done these scenarios now and my scores are about as high as they can possibly get i feel it's better to train some completely different type of scenarios now uh to train other parts of my aim and kind of put it all together as always i hope this helped or i hope it was at least interesting and as always See you later.